morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Bring the Zoo to You. Uh, sorry we couldn't join you live today. We were having some technical difficulty, uh, but we don't want you to miss out on the exciting uh, uh, Bring the Zoo to You that we have for today, which is to uh, have an animal care session and enrichment session with our gray seal pups. Uh, so we are coming to you from one of our marine habitats here at Brookfield Zoo, and we are actually uh, at Pinniped Point. And uh, at this point in time, I'm gonna welcome out our animal care team. And as the team comes out, you're gonna see that uh, we're doing our best here at Brookfield Zoo to be as safe as possible with each other, as well as with our animals. And so you'll see that the staff here, the animal care team here today, will have masks and gloves on. Um, as we start interacting with our uh, gray seal pups. And these are the pups that we were really, really excited about uh, that were born just this past January here. Uh, and they were actually born in our um, uh, behind the scenes area and they were just, um, they just came out to uh, this particular habitat uh, in uh, February. So they've only been out here about a month and they're making wonderful progress. So ever since they were born, uh, we have been trying to do a little bit of interacting with them even when they were still nursing from their moms. And uh, we also then, once they were weaned from mom, and we'll talk more about um, their uh, uh, infancy in just a few moments, uh, but we started to develop a relationship with the, uh, both of the, the females. So. Uh, let's see, here closest to me, um, working with animal care specialist Heather, uh, is Celia. And Celia was born on January 10th. And uh, she is eating some capelin and herring in her uh, diet today. And a little bit further down the deck, you'll see animal care specialist Melissa. And she's working with Peanut. Peanut was born on January 9th, and actually today, Peanut is three months old today. So while they're out on, uh, on deck and you get a chance to see their bodies really well, uh, I'd like to point out that they actually do look very different. Uh, we were worried about that when they were born, uh, given the fact that when they were born, they were uh, completely white, uh, white fur uh, called Lanugo. And uh, it was a little bit challenging to tell them apart when they were both white. Uh, but as they molted that uh, fur out, and that usually, start, that usually takes place between two and four weeks of age, um, they started to gain this coat that you see here today. And so if you look here at Celia, she's the one closest to you right now. She has some dark spots, but they're actually spread quite uh, far apart. And she doesn't have a, a lot of spots. As you compare then, to Peanut, and we're gonna see if Peanut can get a little bit closer to us. And you'll notice Peanut's dark spots are much closer together. And that's how, uh, it's one of the big reasons how, or how, how we can tell um, both of these uh, female pups apart. Um, but in addition to that, uh, they're both different sizes. And you know, that happens to uh, humans and animals alike. Uh, we're all different shapes and sizes, um, and we could tell uh, as soon as they were born, we knew that Celia was a little bit larger than Peanut. And when we were able to weigh them when they were first born, uh, Peanut weighed about 32 pounds at birth, and Celia weighed about 36 pounds at birth. And throughout the course of their life so far, granted it's only three months so far, uh, Celia has remained a little bit larger than um, Peanut. So. As you see, uh, our care team working with them right now, um, they're hand feeding, and that's an important part for us to develop our relationship with them. And our job is to develop a very trusting and positive relationship with the animals. And you'll see, uh, Heather is actually asking Peanut to go in the water. And when she went in, you probably couldn't hear it, but actually Heather told her, good. And good lets the animals know that, we, that they have done a good job and have done what the animal care uh, team has asked of them. And um, you see Heather is moving also uh, down the pool there and Peanut followed and that's another important behavior. Celia right here in front of you now uh, just went in the water when she was asked as well. 
And you'll notice that the animal care team is also, they are holding shapes in their hands. Um, and maybe Melissa could give a, a little close look at uh, the shape right there is a little star shape and it's considered a, a target so you saw that um, uh, Peanut actually did touch her little nose to the target. Um, you, we can use the target to move the animals around. We ask them sometimes to follow it or touch it um, but then we also use it sort of like their name. Uh, they know that that star is always peanut shape so whenever she's looking for where she's supposed to go, she looks for the star shape. And Celia has a round shape. And so the girls are learning to distinguish between their shapes during our, our animal care sessions here. And the most important thing right now that we're doing with them is really just to um, establish some of this foundational uh, training and behavior with them, which is of course to establish that we are a fun and positive presence in their life and that we're gonna ask them a variety of different things, targeting being one of them, to follow us so that we can move them in and out of this habitat. And we actually have four marine habitats here at Pinniped Point. And uh, currently, this is the only habitat besides our behind the scenes area that the pups have been in so far. So they're still just getting used to this habitat. Again, they've only been here for about a month. And it uh, looks like we've got a nice ice, uh, close-up look at Peanut right here. Um, so our animal care session is, has actually ended. And right now, the care team is gonna go in and get some of their favorite uh, enrichment items to bring out. And we're gonna hopefully gonna engage uh, both of the girls in a little play session here, an enrichment session. And uh, one of their favorite things, and we're going to see if the girls will uh, uh, be excited about some water spray up on deck. Uh, we found that over the course of the past uh, month or so, that they really enjoy being under the water spray. So we'll have, uh, see if the uh, girls might want to come up on deck and <laughs> get in some water spray. And then you see Heather down there, she actually has a uh, watering can to also uh, uh, provide them with some water, as well as a couple other different enrichment items. So we're going to see if uh, the girls might want to come up on uh, on deck. You know, the other thing I'll, I'll mention to you guys as we're um, uh, waiting for the girls to see they'll come back up is to talk a little bit about when they were first born. Uh, we talked about that they weighed in the uh, 32 and 36 pounds. And gray seals have one of the shortest nursing periods of any of the pinnipeds. And they actually only nurse for about three to three and a half weeks. However, in that time, they can gain anywhere between two and a half and five pounds a day, and that's body weight a day. And uh, during those first three weeks, uh, we actually had um, both of the girls gain quite a bit of weight. Um, we had Peanut gained, I want to say it was about uh, 85 pounds during that time, and uh, a little bit more than for Celia. And right now, uh, both of the girls are weighing almost one, uh, Peanut is about 95 pounds, and right now um, uh, Celia is a little over 120 pounds. So as you can see, Celia again being just a little bit uh, larger than Peanut. Their mothers um, are Tasha and Lily, and you may have seen them on previous visits here to the zoo. Tasha and Lily are uh, 16 years old, and their father's name uh, is Kenak. And Kenak has a really uh, interesting story to his life, and we're gonna be sharing his story on a later uh, Facebook Live, hopefully uh, coming uh, later this month. So please uh, tune in later to uh, hear more about their parents. Um, and when we're talking about their parents too, we wanna remind everyone that here at Brookfield Zoo, we actually uh, hold the AZA North American Stud Book for gray seals, and uh, I am uh, Rita Stacy, the curator of marine mammals. I may not have introduced myself to start, uh, but I'm also the stud book keeper and uh, population management planner for gray seals. And Peanut and Celia's birth were actually recommendations made 
to help sustain our North American population here um, uh, in North America. And we have 10 facilities in North America that have gray seals. And currently there are only 25 gray seals anywhere in North America that you would be able to see them. So uh, Brookfield Zoo right now actually has the largest population of gray seals. Uh, we actually have five, and that's the largest of any of the facilities um, that house gray seals. So it looks like we're gonna end with the water spray and uh, we're gonna try to engage uh, both Celia and Peanut with uh, some interactions with some of their favorite enrichment items. And um, you'll see some of the, the little green uh, strips that we have. Um, we actually have a wonderful enrichment team uh, that have made um, some really cool looking enrichment for these guys. And it's actually made out of car wash strips, but it really looks like um, kelp, uh, especially the one that Melissa is hanging on to over there. And you'll see that the, uh, the girls are very interested in looking at it from underwater. And uh, they do like to uh, pull on it and bite on it a little bit and get tangled on it. Um, and this is another way that our animal care team can engage our animals in uh, um, some fun play behavior and, uh, and be a really positive uh, uh, presence in their uh, habitat here. I think we can um, uh, try to think of uh, the girls right now have uh, a, a diet that consists of herring and capelin and right now they're eating between five and six pounds of food a day. Uh, in case you're wondering, and they actually have a very uh, uh, detailed nutrition plan that we uh, lay out and we actually review it every week. Um, one of the behaviors that I didn't really talk about during the animal care session was uh, we did talk about how we asked the girls to follow us. We actually have them follow us into our behind the scenes area where we have a platform scale and we ask the girls to uh, get on the scale every week so we can weigh them because we want to assure that as growing pups that they are continuing to grow and so we want to make sure that their diet plan uh, and nutrition plan matches uh, the needs that they have at the time. So uh, right now, like I said, they're eating about five to six uh, pounds of food a day. Um, also, with, with their nutrition and their diet, um, we work with them in our animal care sessions. And one of the first things, some of the most important things that we actually uh, teach the animals to do is to actually uh, cooperate in their own health care. And we call some of these behaviors uh, medical or husbandry behaviors. And one of them might be just to get a really good look at their body, being able to touch them and palpate them all over their body, as well as to look closely into their eyes ask the animals potentially to even open their mouth and as we get farther along in their training process they'll actually learn also uh, to be uh, still on deck while a veterinarian could come out and do an ultrasound exam or potentially even take a blood sample from them but given the fact that they're still just three months old they're very early in this training process so we're still establishing our trusting relationship with them and some of these foundational behaviors like we talked about uh, the target and to follow in and out of the water and in and out of our um, behind the scenes area. It looks like um, girls are still uh, a little bit interested in some of their enrichment. Oh, there we go. Uh, so you can uh, get a good close uh, look in their mouth too. When you see them open their mouth, they do have uh, quite a bit of teeth in their mouth, um, and they've had those from birth. Um, and uh, but when they eat, they actually um, really don't chew their food with those teeth. They actually just grasp onto uh, their prey. Oh, that's a great look inside uh, a peanut's mouth. Um, and the one thing though with gray seals is they're very uh, much known for, um, they can uh, rip their food. And so imagine a nice big hole hearing, uh, they might take part of it in their mouth and they use their front claws actually to rip the fish in half and make it a little bit smaller um, to eat. 
Some of you may be wondering too, how long can uh, they hold their breath? And gray seals can hold their breath quite a long time. Uh, they can actually hold their breath about 20 minutes. Um, and they might do that uh, while they're foraging for food out in the wild. Um, and uh, some of the predators, natural predators that they might have out in the wild is uh, sharks and of course humans with um, marine debris and pollution are a problem for gray seals. But we are happy to report that out in the wild these are not considered endangered animals and you would be able to see them over the, um, uh, off the coast of the Atlantic Ocean. So we're gonna wrap up their session here today. Uh, we just wanna thank everyone for joining us uh, every day at 11 for our Bring the Zoo to You. And we're hoping to have you guys come and visit very soon and come see uh, Peanut and Celia here at Pinniped Point. Thank you guys.